says, Jesus says to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Y'all didn't get it. Verse 4 says, after stirring up the water, I mean, the verse 4 says, for the angel went down at a certain time in the pool, stirred up the water. Whoever stepped in first after stirring up the water was made well of whatever disease they had. Verse 8 says, Jesus says to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Y'all didn't get it. Verse 4 says, for the angel went down at a certain time and stirred up the pool. Whoever stepped in the water after stirring up the pool was made well of whatever disease he had. Verse 8 says, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. What's the problem? When you got Jesus, you don't need an angel. Preach. Y'all, he was confined. He says he didn't have no companions. He said the competition is too great. But fourth and final, Jesus says, come here, man. Let me give you a cure. C-U-R-E. That's my fourth and final point. I'm out of here, y'all. He says... Let me cure you. Thank God. I've been just like this man. And I've been stuck at one level. Put me in E flat. I've been stuck at one level. But uh, my brother and my sister, I thank God that Jesus didn't cut me off because I didn't know the right language. I didn't know kingdom talk. But uh, I thank God that the Lord blesses us in spite of our wrong doings. I, I don't know, but can I testify? I told the Lord Lord, if you deliver me this time, oh, I promise you, Lord, that I'll never get in the same shape again. But then I turn around and do the same thing again. Am I not by myself today? I said, Lord, if you get me out of this situation, oh, yes, I promise you, Lord, that I'll never go back to doing the same thing again. Oh, and uh, I thank the Lord, marvelous light, that, 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 that he didn't cut me off. And yes, because, hello, somebody. Because the Lord is extravagant in his benevolence. The Lord don't cut us off because we do wrong. And I've learned, I've learned, I've learned what grace and mercy is because I'm living sometimes on mercy because it is true I do deserve what I get but then the Lord steps in and block what was supposed to come my way. Can I get a witness here? And Jesus says to this man, rise, take up your bed and walk. Can I get a witness here? I bless God because this man could not get to the next level in the same shape that he was in. Isn't that just like God? He always give us what we don't deserve and then he block what we do deserve. Jesus says, you've been laying there for 30, 80 years. Get up from where you are. I'm out of here, marvelous light. But is there anybody in here you can testify that the Lord has been good to you and you 
don't deserve it. The Lord has opened up windows and you don't deserve it. The Lord has opened up a door and you don't deserve it. I'm sorry. I didn't ask you, can I holler? But can I holler in your church? Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me in spite of sinning, in spite of not praying right, in spite of not studying the word, in spite of not always having a kind word. Isn't that just like God? I'm closing, y'all, but there was a man who was trying to get to the next level of his life. This man was not a Christian, but his wife and his children, they were Christians. Can I get a witness here? Y'all, this man decided one day that he would give his life to Christ. And so the man started going to church with his wife and kids. He got close to the pastor inside of the church. He started being a armor bearer. He started going to Bible class. He started going to Sunday school. But then all of a sudden, how many of you know that when you sell out to God, the devil always bother you. The devil always mess with you. The devil took the man's job. The man was about to lose his house. He lost his cars. And the man decided that I had a million dollar life insurance policy. So the man decided that I'll kill myself. And so this man, y'all, he decided that he'll write a letter and give it to his wife. So he went to the table. He got a pen and some paper. He began to write down, honey, I love you. And I don't mean to do this, but I got to do this so you and the kids can live. And then the Bible says, I'm sorry, not the Bible. The Holy Spirit took over the man and the Holy Spirit said, before you kill yourself, do something about it. So the man, he went down to the job court and the job court said we don't have no money he left the job court he went to the unemployment office he went to the employment office but they said he was too overqualified he left job court he left the employment office he went down to social security but they told him that he was too young to collect social security He left Social Security, he went to United Way, and United Way said, we only give money to incorporations. He left United Way and went by Salvation Army. Salvation Army told him that they don't give money to individuals. And so the man got sad. He went back home, he wrote out his letter. He went up to his closet, he got a gun out the box, He set it on the table. He picked the pen back up. He said, honey, I went to the job court. I went to the employment office. I went to the Social Security. I went to United Way. I went to the Salvation Army. And they couldn't do nothing. And before I kill myself, I wanted you to know I tried. He picked the gun up. He loaded the gun, closed it back up, and put it to his head. He was about to pull the trigger, but the Holy Ghost said, wait a minute, man, before you kill yourself, your answer is on the paper. He started looking at the paper. He saw a J in the job core. He saw an E in the employment office. He saw an S in social security. He saw a U in United Way. He saw an S in the Salvation Army. He said, that's Jesus. Before I kill myself, I got to get to the next level, but I can't do it without Jesus. Anybody here, have you ever tried him? Ain't he all right? 